Good evening, everyone. Um, it's been a absolutely unexpected success and it's been a totally overwhelming feeling. This is the first time that I, that I have an overall winning in a photo competition. And, and it's not about that, it's about the picture that has won this, this competition. It's a very special picture to me. It does not only represent my, my vision of nature, my approach to nature, but it also represents one of the most, the, my most beloved places in, in, my, in my area, the places that I've been working for so many years. So I'm really thankful and, 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 and absolutely thrilled to this, to this award. Thank you very much. It's a Mediterranean jellyfish. It's, uh, it's also so-called um, the fried egg jellyfish uh, because of the special shape of the, of the umbrella. It's actually one of the most common uh, jellyfish species in the, in the Mediterranean. And, and the picture was taken in, in a place called La Manga, which is a sandbar, it's a 22 kilometer sandbar, which encloses the, the lagoon of, of Mar Menor. The lagoon is, is a very special place. It's, it's, uh, it has very specific conditions, oceanographic conditions. It's a hypersaline lagoon with extreme temperature variations through the year. And uh, the fact is that Mar Menor actually was never too diverse, simply because of that special conditions. Uh, but it held exceptionally high densities of some truly exceptional species. This is the case for sea horses and jellyfish. The literature cites the lagoon once held the highest population density of long-snouted seahorse in the whole world. And without going into further uh, statistics, during the 90s I personally witnessed more than, let's say, 50 seahorses of all sizes and colors during just half an hour of snorkeling at just a meter depth. That was unique and wonderful. Well, actually, the seahorse, it's, it's a kind of uh, flag for the, for, for the whole Mar Menor. It's like a symbol. It's like an icon of the Mar Menor. Actually, many, many, many small towns uh, by the, the, the shores of Mar Menor has uh, seahorse statues and, and, and symbols on the streets and, and, and so on. And it also belongs to the, to the collective memories of all the children that has that, that were raised uh, on, 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 on Mar Menor. Well, now I'm, I'm going to, to dive in, in Mar Menor. It's, it's a very sad feeling. It's a truly sad feeling. It's not only because of what I'm seeing, it's, it's because I've seen those same places for all of my life, but absolutely full of life with the clear water, lots of underwater vegetation, jellyfish, um, um, seahorses, and, and, and many other species. Now, if you go now to Mamino, what you will find is destruction, is uh, darkness, it's, it's a, it's a, See, it's, it's a bed, a, a, a lagoon bed, which is virtually made of, of mud and, and troubled water and, and, and a few remains of, of the life that once was over there. Essentially the problem in, in Mar Menor has been an outsized, misplanned agriculture development and in second term the massive tourism building development, development for the last 60 years. It has actually now become a paradigm for bad planning, for corruption, for lack of mid and long term vision. And the most relevant consequence of these uh, practices and, 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 and the one where the lagoon has uh, crushed has been the eutrophication of its waters. It's, it's very simple. Too much nutrients in a virtually closed system ended up by massive blooms of phytoplankton that consume all oxygen available in the water, which trouble the water, which in turn killed the seagrass and the seaweed, and that initially were the, the engine of, of, of the lagoon's life. Uh, there has been several episodes since, since the 90s 
but also in the last five years has been especially uh, destructive. This summer, we, we all have seen on the news um, the mass dead episodes happening in, in Mar Menor. This is actually the, the end of the line of a very long process of degradation that started um, somehow 60 years ago. But at the same time, it's, it's what's making people to finally take action in, in the problem of, of Mar Menor. Because we are essentially visual animals and we need to see the things happening. It's very sad in one hand that, that we need to reach to the extremes to, to take action. But finally we are taking action and, and I think that we, we need to keep that. That's the good thing that we are now taking action. My picture was taken in uh, 2014 and that was the season before the mass episodes of dead fish and green water really started. And in a way, it's a picture that now has become a kind of, of memory, a kind of, uh, a kind of tribute to what the lagoon uh, once, once was. Given that the most relevant part of the problem are the vast crops of uh, industrial agriculture around the lagoon, which are actually uh, called the, the Europe's orchard. I would strongly encourage uh, people, consumers, to track the origin of the veggies they take and make sure that they are produced in a sustainable way. Otherwise, the, the, the healthy food might be hiding dead sea horses and many other creatures among their leaves. Photography and overall speaking, photojournalism has a great power. It is this the power of visualize the issues, visualize all those problems. It's not a minor pro a power, but at the same time, it's, it's often overestimated in a society that has sadly learned to live side by side every day with the environmental and human disgrace. Sadly, we had lost sensitivity. At the same speed, the bar of daily drama is being raised higher and higher. And I think that we are now trapped in a very dangerous spiral. In a way, we are playing the ostrich game. And I'm afraid saying that naivety is simply not an option. And yet, prisoner of that, of my own contradictions as a father journalist, I don't want to give up. Uh, that must be the human nature.